you're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa returned to Bahrain this evening from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia after leading Bahrain's delegation to the 32nd Arab Summit in Jeddah held yesterday. At the invitation of the custodian of the two holy mosques, His Majesty King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. Earlier in the day, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa left the King Abdul Aziz International Airport in Jeddah. Upon his departure, His Majesty sent a cable of thanks to the custodian of the two Ahori mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, in which His Majesty expressed deep thanks and sincere appreciation for the warm reception and hospitality His Majesty received in Saudi Arabia as an extension of what connects the two countries and their brotherly people, and the distinguished historical fraternal relations between them at all levels. His Majesty highly appreciated the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for hosting this important Arab summit. Its efforts and usual keenness to promote joint Arab action and support all endeavors aimed at concerted Arab efforts at all fields in a manner that serves the interests of Arab states and people and preserves the security, stability and prosperity of the region. He wished the custodian of the two holy mosques good health and the kingdom of Saudi Arabia further security, safety and prosperity. During the speech of His Majesty the King at the 32nd Arab Summit, which convened at the King Abdullah International Conference Center in Jeddah yesterday, His Majesty announced that the Kingdom of Bahrain will host the next Arab Summit in 2024. Bahrain's hosting of the next Arab Summit confirms the royal approach in supporting the march of joint Arab action and that would achieve Arab solidarity and interdependence and strengthen Arab capabilities in facing the current regional and international challenges. The Kingdom of Bahrain's hosting of the upcoming Arab Summit comes as a continuation and affirmation of the approach of His Majesty the King, and with the backing of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, and based on the belief that Arab relations are a matter of fate for Arab states, and that cooperation and interdependence represent a strategic choice to achieve security, stability, and development for the Arab people. The convening of the next Arab Summit in the Kingdom of Bahrain constitutes an important historical event, as it will be the first Arab Summit held in Manama. Therefore, the approval of the Arab League Council at the summit level for the Kingdom of Bahrain to host the 33rd regular session is gaining increasing importance in terms of timing and Place. It is hoped that the presidency of the Kingdom of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King will contribute to taking more rapid and accomplished steps in Arab coordination and cooperation and to come out with resolutions and recommendations that protect the Arab nation and serve common interests and just Arab causes. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa attended a lunch banquet yesterday hosted by the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, in honor of the Arab leaders, marking their participation in the 32nd Arab Summit. After the banquet, His Majesty King Hamad bid farewell to the Saudi Crown Prince and Prime Minister as well as Arab leaders. The Speaker of the Representative Council, Ahmed bin Salman Al Salam, praised the keynote speech delivered by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa while participating in the 32nd Arab Summit hosted by Saudi Arabia in the city of Jeddah, noting that it represents a roadmap for future Arab action. He indicated that the royal speech, with the insightful vision embedded in it, embodied a pivotal strategy of utmost importance to address Arab challenges and charted a lofty methodology for the future of the region, noting that His Majesty the King emphasized the importance of continuing the march of joint Arab action and strengthening the just and comprehensive peace approach to ensure security, stability and prosperity for all. The speaker pointed out that His Majesty the King had appreciated the efforts of Saudi Arabia under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, 32nd Arab Summit President and the support of the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud, in serving the causes of the Arab nation, providing the success requirements for the Arab Summit, the resumption of diplomatic relations and humanitarian efforts, and everything that would achieve prosperity for the people and countries of the region. Lim Salam also praised a royal keynote address in which His Majesty the King expressed Bahrain's wise diplomatic policies regarding the situation in Sudan, preserving the legitimate rights of Egypt in the Nile waters, completing the peace process to reach a just solution to the Palestinian issue, as well as achieving peace between Russia and the Ukraine. The speaker said that the King's speech constituted a roadmap for the future of the Arab world according to a civilized and humane vision, as it emphasized the ancient history of the Arab 
Arab nation, religious values, and the promotion of the values of human coexistence as well as religious and civilizational rapprochement. He also hailed his man seeking Hamed's wishes for the success of the 2023 UN Climate Change Conference or Conference of the Parties of the UNFCCC COP28, which will be hosted by the UAE later this year, which is an all-inclusive platform for agreeing about ways to face future challenges. He expressed pride in Bahrain's hosting of the 2024 Arab Summit. The Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh al Saleh asserted that His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa's keynote speech at the 32nd Arab Summit held in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, consolidates the royal noble visions to enhance joint Arab action and achieve the aspirations of Arab countries and people. Al Saleh expressed pride in all-inclusive topics included in His Majesty the King's address, aimed at broadening, broadening intra-Arab cooperation and coordination in order to achieve the best for Arab people. He added that His Majesty the King's call for adopting the comprehensive and just peace approach and addressing various issues reflects the kingdom's long-standing approach in building strategic international relations based on mutual respect, coexistence and peace among all. Al-Saleh expressed pride in the kingdom's hosting of the 33rd Arab Summit, noting that the 2024 summit will enrich joint Arab action. During his speech at the 32nd Arab League Summit in Jeddah, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, for his part, the Syrian President Bashar al-Assad praised the intensive efforts of the custodian of the two holy mosques and his great role in promoting stability in the region and making the Arab Summit a success. He expressed his wishes that the Jeddah Summit marks the beginning of a new phase of solidarity, peace and development in the region. At the conclusion of the 32nd Arab League Summit, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, His Royal Highness Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud, announced the adoption of the Jeddah Declaration and also expressed his best wishes for success for the Kingdom of Bahrain in hosting the next Arab Summit in 2024. The Kingdom of Bahrain has earnestly supported the endeavors of the League of Arab States, which aim at promoting joint Arab action and achieving the aspirations of the Arab people. The Kingdom of Bahrain pays great attention to the concerns of the Arab nation and plays a fundamental role in advocating its crucial issues as well as contributing to developing the mechanisms of joint Arab action through its membership in concerned regional organizations, key among which the League of Arab States. Since its founding, the League of Arab States has placed at the forefront of its goals strengthening ties between Arab countries, preserving the independence of member states, coordinating plans and policies among them, in addition to achieving cooperation in economic, cultural, social and health affairs, while protecting Arab interests and cooperating with international bodies to ensure that security and peace prevail. And in light of its membership in the League of Arab States, as well as its firm belief in its charter and principles, the Kingdom of Bahrain has played a constructive role in the League by heading several ministerial meetings that addressed pressing Arab issues which sought to preserve the interests of the member states and their peoples. And in a bid to reinforce collective Arab work, the Kingdom of Bahrain has ratified most of the agreements, treaties and charters issued by the League and proposed many initiatives to develop and document joint Arab action in an affirmation to its consent to the strenuous efforts of the League of Arab States in advocating the interests of Arab nation as well as its noble goals and constant principles. The foreign policy of the Kingdom of Bahrain is based on solid foundations and supporting peaceful solutions to issues at all levels and implementation and realization of the visions of His Majesty the King to continue Bahrain's diplomacy and its long-standing approach. These include building relations and frameworks that protect the rights and interests of the Kingdom of Bahrain in the international arena, striving to consolidate peace, security, stability, justice and development and to develop bilateral and multilateral relations based on the principles of good neighborliness and international agreements and conventions in order to implement and the Kingdom's strategy. These agreements seek to bridge points of view and develop paths to a lasting and comprehensive peace are the motive for all Bahraini efforts that explicitly support world peace. Bahraini diplomacy in the Gulf, Arab and United Nations action is based on resolving issues by peaceful means and that was evident in the efforts of the Kingdom of Bahrain at the level of the unified and inclusive Gulf House in addition to the Bahraini presence in the Arab summits and its support for everything that would move the outstanding issues in order to achieve breakthroughs. Concerning the unification of the Arab ranks, the Kingdom of Bahrain supported the Arab position on the Palestinian issue and the right to establish a Palestinian state in addition to the return of Syria to the League of Arab States. 
Bahrain also supported Egypt and the Arabs regarding the Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, efforts aimed at resolving the Yemeni crisis. A declaration of the Kingdom of Bahrain and the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence, which was established by His Majesty the King, came to achieve a Bahraini vision in rejecting differences in hate speech, and thus Bahrain became a land for different religions and sects who enjoy security and peace in the country. The Kingdom of Bahrain inaugurated its Pavilion Wet Origins at the 18th edition of the Venice Biennale of Architecture exhibition, which opened yesterday in Venice, Italy. Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities President and Pavilion Commissioner General Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa attended the inaugural ceremony of the pavilion, which will continue until November the 26th. The Kingdom's participation in Venice Biennale of Architecture explores the possibility of availing of the cooling and air conditioning systems in Bahrain in innovative and creative ways in order to benefit from its capability to condense water and then use it in creating eco-friendly environments and achieve more balance between the urban development projects and the natural environment. The pavilion displays an installed miniature model of a local climactic environment and shows the public the possibility of implementing urban applications which have no existence yet. The aim is to improve the infrastructure while taking into consideration the unique climatic conditions of the Kingdom of Bahrain like high temperatures and humidity. A documentary will be shown on this topic and a book entitled Wet Origins will be inaugurated for the public. A clause exempting rapists from prosecution if they marry their victims is hours away from being scraped by the Shura Council. The Shura Council is said to vote to remove Article 353 from the 1976 Penal Code during its weekly session tomorrow. The move was already approved by the majority of Representatives Council session last week. Article 353 currently states that no penalty shall be imposed on a person who commits one of the crimes stipulated in the preceding article if a valid marriage is concluded between him and the victim. It also states that if a final judge judgment is issued against him before the marriage contract is concluded, its execution shall be suspended and its side effects shall end. The Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments Minister and the Interior Ministry alongside the Supreme Council for Women have already backed the abolition of this article. The Bahrain Med Directorate has warned of the chances of scattered rains with thunder and lightning affecting the kingdom today. Wind speeds are expected to be between 10 to 15 knots, with gusts reaching 30 knots at times. Daytime temperatures, according to the Med Directorate of the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications, may reach up to 36 degrees Celsius, while at nights they're expected to be generally mild. The kingdom has experienced cloudy weather with light and sporadic rain in the past few hours due to an air depression in the region. This is unusual for Bahrain during the Sarayat season at this time of the year.